Now, there's no words to that song. It's just like a musical syllable. They're almost all the same, but the tune is a little different to go down or go up. We are about to celebrate the National Park Service's centennial. And part of the goal is to bring younger generations to the National Park Service. This Ticket to Ride grant enabled us to bring kids from El Reno and Hammond to Washita Battlefield. Uh, it's, it's a site that they need to know about. You know, this place, it's very sad. It's a sacred place for the Cheyenne and Arapaho. And to bring those kids here so that they can understand that history, understand the culture, it's very important to us. There's eight holes on top. Everything has meaning. This is a solid piece of wood. The first thing that they used for flutes was solid, naturally hollow uh, materials. When the wind saw the leaves fall, it thought it was a matter of time before the tree became weak enough to blow over. The wind left and would come back later and see. The tree shivered and with the knowledge of the cold wind, it learned how to make itself stronger for when it became cold again. Pretty cool. I'm very excited. I want to show this to my grandpa. It was very nice to see all the other kids that aren't native, but they were interested. And so I think that's something positive of today. It'll go. It's raining. It'll go. Eho, Ed, it's snowing. Eho, Ed, Eho, Ed. It don't net, it's cold. It don't net, it don't net. Well, this year we're doing uh, back to school bashes in the communities. Uh, we're going out to, you know, some of the sites that we serve and providing school supplies for kids that are in public school, pre K through 12th grade. And we're seeing a lot more parents come out, and also a lot of grandparents are coming out. More grandparents are taking care of their ch children's children. So the services are needed in these communities. Yes, this is a good time that we get to go out and meet new parents. They're new parents that are their kids maybe going to school for the first time and they're not really sure what they need to do and it kind of we kind of help them along the way and let them know about what JOM can help with and uh, provide their students with while they're attending school. But it, it's exciting to to meet the new parents and also to see our uh, continuing parents to come and get involved in our program. These pre-packaged boxes that are given out to the students, they are by grades. Um, one year we compiled all the school supply lists from all the different schools and there are a lot of schools that we serve. And we compiled a list and we're just providing the basic school supplies for these grades and that's what they're given. So. They receive their box and they have a list in the front of what is all inside the box. That way it will make it easier for the parent to get what else they need to get from their school supply list. I just get a lot of parents just thanking us for all the supplies that they're receiving. I mean, they said every little bit helps. Even if it's not all the supplies that they get from the, on their school supply list, they are very happy with what they're getting from us. They said every little bit helps, especially with families that have more than two kids in school. It gets costly and it's, it's really important that we get those supplies out to them. Tonight we're in uh, Sealing, Oklahoma at the Community Hall. Um, we have students from Sealing Public Schools, Oklahoma City, Canton, Clinton, 
um, and they all came here for a stem lock-in night. Um, this is the second of its kind. It's our spring uh, 2015 lock-in. And what we're going to be doing is hosting these types of lock-ins in other communities as well. We're going to program the robot to move, okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is a brain for the robot. We're going to um, test out our robots and then watch movies and then play games and then we're going to go um, sleep. Has this been fun? Yes. You tell a child something or they forget. If you show them, they remember. But if you involve them, that's what we're trying to do with the STEM, is involve them with hands-on activities and they'll learn, they'll remember. Oh, the name is, um, what is it, the yeah. The name is the Tominator. It's important for us to bring events like uh, STEM lock-ins or um, field trips. The purpose is to introduce our Native kids to um, these types of sciences or careers, um, uh, getting them involved in technology, engineering, and of course, um, kind of gearing them towards science and math in school. But we're, we're trying to keep up with the times and be progressive and get our educated, our children more educated and let them understand why they need education, why it's important, and why science and math are important. Hadosahit, what is your name? Hadosahit, Hadosahit, what is your name? Everett Naas Sitna, my name is Everett. Everett Naas Sitna, Everett Naas Sitna. Ni teche, it's a good night. Ni teche, ni teche. Let's learn some Arapaho. Chesa, Chesley, Niece, Niece, Nessa, Nessa, Yang, Yang, Yathan, Yathan. Nita Okay, first of all, let's try our buzzers. <coughs> Brittany, Ariana, in what town is the Muscogee Creek Complex located? Uh, Native Generals, Kacha? Omogi. Correct. It's an academic bowl, so we treat it like an academic bowl, but its focus is on the tribes of Oklahoma. Where is the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma headquarters located? Yep. What about Sac and Fox Nation? Stroud. Yep. Shawnee Tribe? Miami. Yeah. Okay, my turn. We're studying so that we can win and compete against other teams. So How's it been going so far? Good. I think we need well, to know, Have you been studying enough, you think? No. I think we need to study more. That's why you're still out here working. Yeah. Huh? Okay. We have students that come from all over the state and they compete and they answer questions um, based on the history, culture, con um, people, contemporary issues, um, all focusing on the tribes of Oklahoma. Number five, what town is Jim Thorpe's home located? Ariel Colbert White. Pennsylvania. Incorrect. How did this morning go? It went really good, we but we won, but I think we could have done better. Okay, tell me where the Shawnee and Arapaho are located. In the north. Concho, man, I told you that. I told you that. Okay, tell me, uh, tell me where the uh, Fort Sillipatchee are located. Patchy. 
Now we're getting somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have 29 teams, 20 in the high school division, 9 in the middle school division. There's probably about 150 students here, plus their sponsors. 150 native kids in one place. Yeah, yeah. What do you call that? Uh, awesome. <laughs> no. Chaos? Yeah, fun <laughs> chaos, but no, it's been really great. Let's learn some Cheyenne. What we are doing is we are creating a curriculum for the high school, uh, juniors and senior level, level ones and level two, so it will be two years of a language program. Uh, that way, our students, our Indian students, our native students can take the classes, the language classes, and get high school credit for it. A grant was received to work on the language aspect of the tribe's culture and language. And what they're hoping to do with that is to develop some resources so they can teach the language. You don't have to have a degree in education. You will go through our training program. So we will train you how to use the teaching curriculum, the materials, classroom management, things that uh, teachers need to know. And uh, it's a great career opportunity for anybody willing to teach and to stick with it and learn the language also. They have to be fingerprinted, they have to go through the background check, they have to have all of the credentials to meet what we need, and we also are trying to make sure that they will be supported in the classroom. Because we know that many times, since there is not a teacher preparation program, they may not have had the college education to be in that classroom. So we are putting together a program that will train them to be effective in the classroom. Well, the, they'll attend so many hours a week, um, maybe 20 hours a week, and we would give them the teacher's guides, something to follow that is used under the World Language Certification process. We're following everything under Oklahoma standards. We've looked at uh, possibly having language speakers that are already have college degrees, are already teachers, so that's one level you're going to look at. The other one is uh, the novice language speaker who doesn't have a degree but has the opportunity to teach in the public school but with a mentoring program of a certified teacher to help with that. Essentially we guide them to uh, teach these languages, whichever one they, they prefer. What these funds will do is to help develop those teachers and offer them the professional development that they will need to become great classroom teachers and to support them in the classroom. Like I said, it is a career opportunity. Uh, you will be paid. There is stipends. You'll be paid during your training. You'll be paid at work. It's very important for the community to get involved uh, because without them, we don't have the support. Um, you know, the government, the tribal agencies, they can support us as much as they can, but it essentially, it's up to the people. It's something that you really need to have a passion for, and it is our job to help you become more comfortable and more familiar with the words, the written language, there'll be plenty of that. You know, there's a lot of kids today that um, they don't know their traditions, they don't know their culture, 
and it's through no fault of their own, they just weren't raised that way. If they had this opportunity, they could learn about their people. Because I mean, this language, teaching it, we have culture and history behind it. We can't teach language without the history and culture. So they, they could learn all sorts of things, um, you know, where they came from. I think to learn this in high school, you could learn a lot more about yourself before you finish school instead of going on to college and finding out, oh, this is, you know, this is where I came from. And you'd learn that earlier. We're also looking at having professional development uh, programs to help them understand in, in those two levels of, uh, of teaching uh, methodology and uh, classroom management and plus teaching styles. You will learn some words, you will hear some words, listen to some words. A little bit louder. A little bit louder. Hatchet, not a Okay. Hatchet, <laughs> Yeah. So that's how you say, I will see you again. And then we're going to do get up and do some action with it. Nat as sitting on. Say your name first. You can lay Nat as sitting on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say your name first. Carl Nat as sitting on. Good job. Good job. <laughs> I encourage people to go to our community uh, classes that we have and you can check our CA language website for when they're going to be yeah. and um, it isn't drudgery. I enjoy the language, I enjoy new words and I have fun in our classes that people in our classes enjoy hearing from others. The curriculum is being designed to make it fun, especially for the high school students, high school level and they can go home and then share with their parents, their siblings, and then we have our community meetings in support so their parents can come also and learn, and also the younger ones. There is a generation of language speakers that were, were taught in the, in the boarding school era that it wasn't good to speak your language. It was uh, not something that you can share, and they almost succeeded in that into the fact that we have a group of uh, people that are at a certain age that don't speak the language because their parents didn't share it with them because it was it was not good to and it was you know he had to say it but it was beat out of them and that's that was one way to defeat the the Native American was to uh, take that away from them and so we have a generation of people that didn't get that passed on to them because their parents felt like it was not good Language is thought. Language is the way you view the world put into words. So if you really want to know a people and the way they view that world, their perspective of the world, then you have to know the language because that's how they communicate what it is that they see and do on a daily basis. And a lot of the words are not just words, they are phrases um, that teach you something. So once you start learning the language, you understand how you are to conduct yourself, how you're to behave yourself. And you also not only understand that, but also understand that the reason you're being told this is for your own benefit, so you'll have a good life. Nyakit, good morning. Niaki. Niaki. Niaku usine. It's a good afternoon. Niaku usine. Niaku usine. Hatchet na habethan. I will see you again. Hatchet na habethan. Hatchet na habethan. They don't chew What is your name? They don't chibi. They don't chibi. Not cause. Not his chibi. My name is Little Bear. Not cause. Not his chibi. Not cause. Not his chibi. Stop pussy bones. I'll see you again. Stop pussy bones. Stop pussy bones.